Hi Bobcats! In this video, we are going to actually finally draw some of these Vesper structures. We're going to start with the Lewis structures and then use that table from the previous video to decide uh, what the electron geometry is and what the molecular geometry is. Our objective is to draw the Vesper structures for some real molecules. Our first structure is for silicon tetrachloride. I've already drawn the Lewis structure here. What we want to do is focus on the central atom, which is the silicon. And so when I'm looking here at the silicon, it has one, two, three, four domains. If you look at the Vesper chart for uh, four domains, the electron geometry is tetrahedral. And since all of the lone pair, all of the domains are bonding, we have no lone pairs on the central atom, the molecular geometry or the shape is the same thing. It's also uh, a tetrahedral. And so if I'm going to draw the shape of this structure, our basic tetrahedral shape is we draw the central atom, we draw one line straight up, we draw one line down into the right, and then we do a wedge down into the left and a dotted line down into the left. All of the outside atoms are chlorines. And generally speaking, in Vesper structures, for outside atoms like the chlorines in this molecule, we do not draw the lone pairs. However, if there are any lone pairs on the central atom, you must definitely need to draw them. And then I guess one last thing we can say about this molecule is that the bond angle, since it's tetrahedral electron geometry, is 109 and a half degrees. Our next example is formaldehyde. And the central atom in formaldehyde is this carbon. And looking at the carbon, I have one, two, three electron domains. The double bond counts as just one domain. With three electron domains, I guess I should probably write down the number of domains too. With three domains, the electron geometry is uh, trigonal planar. And when you look at that central atom, all of the domains are bonding domains. There are no lone pairs. And so the molecular geometry is the same. It is trigonal planar as well. To draw the trigonal planar structure, I'm going to draw the central carbon atom. Um, I'll go ahead and draw the double bond and each of these single bonds as regular lines pointing towards the corners of an equilateral triangle. We're going to put an oxygen up there, a hydrogen down here, and a hydrogen down here. And all three of these bond angles are 120 degrees. For carbon dioxide, the uh, central carbon atom has two domains. Both of the domains are double bonds. So we have two domains. And uh, with two domains, the electron geometry is linear. Since all of the domains are bonding, the molecular geometry is the same. So that is also linear. And so to draw the linear structure, we'll just draw the three atoms in a line. And again, we do not need to draw the lone pairs on the outside atoms, the oxygens. But if a central atom has lone pairs, make sure that you do draw them. One last bit here, the bond angle here from an oxygen through the carbon to the other oxygen is 180 degrees. In this example, we look at water. When uh, you look at that central oxygen atom, there are four domains. Two of them are lone pairs, and two of them are bonding pairs. So we have four domains. With four domains, the electron geometry is tetrahedral. But now that we have some lone pairs on that central atom, the molecular geometry will be different. If you have four 
domains, and two of those domains are lone pairs, the name of the shape is bent. To draw this structure, since the electron geometry is tetrahedral, we would draw that central oxygen atom, and then we would draw the four positions for a tetrahedron using our standard notation. For two of the positions, we would draw in H's for the hydrogen atoms, and for the remaining two positions, we would draw in a lone pair. And I generally tend to circle the lone pairs just to emphasize, yeah, I really meant to do it. It's not just a random pair of dots um, left over from erasing something else previously on my paper. Um, it does not matter which positions we draw the lone pairs in. It would be perfectly fine to draw this structure with the uh, hydrogens and the lone pairs in any possible combination. So we might have the hydrogen here and over here, and the lone pairs here and down here. Um, any possible um, location is fine for the lone pairs versus the bonding pairs. And then one last thing to label here, the bond angle from hydrogen to oxygen to hydrogen is 109 and a half degrees. Our next example is ammonia. Ammonia has one lone pair on the central atom and three bonds. So it has a total of one plus three or four domains. With four domains, the electron geometry is tetrahedral. And if you're referring back to that Vesper chart, if you look at four domains and one lone pair, you'll find that the molecular geometry is trigonal pyramidal. Okay, so the electron geometry and the molecular geometry are different because the central atom has a lone pair. To draw this structure, we'll draw the central nitrogen atom, and then we'll draw our standard tetrahedral shape. Most of the time that people draw the trigonal pyramidal structure, they tend to put the lone pair at the top. You don't have to. It's fine to fit it in any of the positions, but it makes the shape a little easier to see because if I put the four or sorry, the three hydrogens down here, you can imagine a triangle formed by these three hydrogens and uh, that's the trigonal part, and then the uh, nitrogen atom is the tip of that pyramid, so we have a trigonal pyramidal shape. Uh, one last thing to label here, um, the bond angle, and I've got so many lines over there, I don't want to add any more on the structure itself, uh, but the bond angle is 109 and a half degrees. That's determined by the electron geometry. When we start looking at more complicated molecules, we often have to treat more than one atom as being the center of the structure. So in something like ethylene, well, if you look at the left-hand carbon atom here, it has three domains. Two of them are single bonds to hydrogen, and one of them is a double bond to the other carbon. Well, if we have three domains, the electron geometry is going to be trigonal planar. And if you look at the other carbon, you'll find the same thing. The uh, carbon has three domains, making it trigonal planar as well. So both of these carbons are trigonal planar. So frequently in trying to represent the Vesper structure for this compound, ethylene gets drawn this way. We're going to show the two carbon atoms in the same plane with a double bond. And then also all in the same plane, we're going to draw towards the corners of an equilateral triangle before placing the hydrogens. All right, there we go. Uh, the bond angles in here are going to be 120 degrees because it is trigonal planar. The, um, the electron geometry um, is what will uh, determine what those bond angles are. In a multiple choice testing format, um, this is one way that questions on Vesper structure get asked. What is the shape of a molecule of CF4? 
to answer questions about shape, you have to consider uh, the Vesper structure. To know the Vesper structure, you first have to draw a Lewis dot structure. Um, so you can uh, pause the video and take a moment to figure out what that Lewis dot structure is. I'll, I'm going to just go ahead and, and draw it. We're going to have the central carbon atom surrounded by four um, fluorines, and each fluorine will have three lone pairs. That makes everybody have an octet. Okay, a couple more lone pairs here. All right, now that we have the Lewis dot structure drawn, we can focus on the central atom, which is the carbon, and count the number of domains. It has four domains. So with four domains, it's going to be a tetrahedral structure. And with a tetrahedral structure, the um, bond angle will be 109 and a half degrees, if we had been asked for that. Um, sometimes in a multiple choice format, instead of asking for the shape of a molecule, they might ask for the bond angles. Um, so if they're asking about anything that's related to the shape, its name, the bond angles, etc., you want to be sure that you draw the Vesper structure. For this next example, what is the HCH bond angle in ethylene? I drew the Lewis dot structure for ethylene here, and that blue uh, arc is indicating the bond that we want to know the angle for. Go ahead and pause this video for a second and decide what the correct bond angle is. All right. Now that we're resuming, I'm going to reveal one more little bit of information. Bond angles and other shape information have to come from your Vesper structure, not your Lewis structure. If you're looking at this Lewis structure, you can be fooled into saying, oh yeah, that's a square corner, so the bond angle is going to be 90 degrees. But all bond angles in Lewis dot structures are 90 degrees. Um, they're not taking into account what happens in three dimensions, uh, which is where the Vesper structures come in. And so if you're looking at this structure, the important thing uh, to look for is that this carbon atom has three domains. If you have three domains, the electron geometry is trigonal planar. And with trigonal planar electron geometry, you get bond angles of 120 degrees. Um, the Vesper structure actually looks something more like this, where the angles around each uh, carbon are going towards the corners of an equilateral triangle or at about 120 degrees. So the correct answer on this one would be C, 120 degrees. Our objective was to draw the Vesper structures for some real molecules. You have to start with the Lewis dot structures, count the domains on the central atom, and then count how many of those domains are lone pairs.